Putin wants to arm the Houthis with anti-ship cruise missiles. Military personnel from the US have eliminated three unmanned boats operated by Yemeni Houthis in the Red Sea waters. These actions by the US military were taken in self-defense, according to the US Central Command. The report also indicates that these unmanned surface vessels were recognized as posing an immediate threat to US and coalition forces, as well as the commercial vessels in the region. Since last autumn, particularly following Hamas's incursion into Israel and the start of the Israel operations in the Gaza Strip, Yemen's Houthis have regularly attempted attacks on vessels in the Red Sea. In this case, According to Middle East Eye article, Russian President Vladimir Putin is considering increasing his support for the anti-Israel and anti-Western coalition known as the Axis of Resistance. In particular, Russian Federation asked Saudi Arabia for permission to arm the Houthis with anti-ship cruise missiles. Thus, Moscow wants to further strengthen military relations with Iran. The Middle East Eye article says that US Defense Department officials are concerned that the escalation between Israel and Lebanon could further strengthen Iran's military cooperation with Russia. Fears are fueled by American intelligence, which claims that the Russian Federation is considering increasing its support for the so-called axis of resistance to Iran. In particular, the Kremlin leader Putin considered the possibility of providing the Houthis with anti-ship missiles. However, arms supplies to the Houthis are potentially more sensitive than aid to Hezbollah because of Russia's efforts to win over oil-rich Gulf states. According to US intelligence, Saudi Arabia's Prince Mohammed bin Salman intervened to prevent Putin from supplying the Houthis with missiles. The talks took place after Putin's visit to Saudi Arabia and the UAE in December 2023. According to Western media, Putin and Mohammed bin Salman agreed to relieve tensions in the region. Fabian Hinz, an expert on ballistic and cruise missiles at the International Institute for Strategic Studies, said that Russia could supply terrorists with the KH-31 supersonic anti-ship missile, which is launched from the air but can be converted for ground launch and was widely exported, including to Venezuela and Yemen during the civil war. Russia mocks Nepalese it recruited for war in Ukraine. Russia is actively recruiting Nepalese to fight in Ukraine, promising them huge sums of money and fast-track procedures for obtaining Russian passports, the New York Times reports. The publication told the story of Nepalese Krishna Bahadur Shahi, who went to the front, believing that he would not be sent to combat positions. As the New York Times writes, the Nepalese man faced financial difficulties, and this is what made him join the ranks of the Russian army. He met human traffickers who quickly organized his flight to Moscow, and such a deal turned out to be profitable for him because he paid $5,600 and in Russia he was supposed to earn $2,200 a month as a contract soldier working as a security guard at the base as he was promised and not on the front lines. In addition, he was promised Russian citizenship as a reward for military service, the publication notes. After two weeks of basic training, though he said he was promised three months, he was told he was going to a front-line position near Donetsk, a Ukrainian city occupied by Russian troops. He tried to protest, saying he would rather be in jail, but that was no option, since even prisoners there are sent to the front lines, the New York Times writes. Quoting the Nepalese, the publication noted that the prisoners usually drank a lot of alcohol and were hostile to the Nepalese. Shahi said that they constantly hit them on the helmets, stabbed them with rifle butts, and shouted at them in Russian. The publication added that after this, the Nepalese decided that he wanted to escape and return to Moscow, paying 4,000 euros to the black carriers. First, he reached Mariupol and then quietly wanted to cross the Russian border, but there, he and a group of other Nepalese were detained and beaten. Later, Russian police showed up. Shahi begged for clemency, saying they were just Nepalese students trying to get to Europe. But while they were waiting in the Mariupol detention center, the police received an electronic bulletin from the Russian army that they were looking for Nepalese deserters. The game was over, and the Russian soldiers sent them to the front line in Donetsk. According to him, they had almost no food or water. They ate ice and stewed frozen beef, which was contrary to Shahi's Hindu religion, the article says. The New York Times added that within a few days, Russian commanders took them out and ordered them to storm the Ukrainian trench line, where he received gunshot wounds to the arm and leg. The Russians gave him first aid and sent him to the hospital, where he escaped and returned to Nepal. 
Recall, at the beginning of 2024, the Nepalese authorities announced that 200 of their citizens had already been recruited into the ranks of the Russian army. The country demands the Russian Federation to return them home and pay monetary compensation to the families of the victims.